They have a bunch of freaking geese and pelicans. So just follow the birds and they'll tell you where the fish are. All right, welcome back everybody. Anybody that's new here, thanks for joining me today. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. There's a big busy road right next to me. But uh, yeah, I am already out on the water and uh, it is finally nice out. I am wearing shorts for the first time this year. Uh, I think it's gonna be like 70 for a high. And uh, that means one thing, lots of big crappies in the shallow water. So hopefully the next thing we get into here is a bunch of really big slabs. I usually only get one big opportunity at this and I might miss it, but if, if I'm on, there's some big fish in this lake. So wish me luck. Okay, so those of you guys that know, I am going to start out just like I start out every season. You guys probably already seen a video one time where uh, where I was fishing with a crappie scrub and I was actually in this area and that was way, way, way early season. I don't know when you guys are gonna see this video specifically, but basically the nice thing about this bait is when the water starts warming up, you can just kinda drag it and pop it through an area and uh yeah if there's if there's active feeding crappie won't take too long to find a couple of them the, the trick is figuring out what depth they're at so like how fast you need to bring in your your bait because if you go too fast then you, you're too high in the column you go too slow you're too low in the column you're too aggressive they won't bite it usually it takes me a couple minutes to get it like back down to where I want it and then I've discovered something kind of stupid with these sometimes those little they have these little frog kicking legs sometimes the little legs get all uh, like bound up and they just stay that way so it doesn't swim right doesn't do anything right and you don't get any bites so it's always fun when you're reeling and bait all the way in and yeah there's no uh, there's no way to catch a fish I'm gonna change it up for a minute throw a fixed bobber on with this plastic the water's still pretty cold, surprisingly, so we will see if leaving it in their face makes a difference. There they are. They were deeper. Here's the first one. Not a bad nine, maybe 10. So I've been messing around by these piers and uh, I thought they would be like up, sh up shallow because of the warm weather, but they're still down deep. Um, it's like five feet around these piers, and I have the bait like three and a half feet down, so really far down towards the bottom. So they must just be sitting right on the bottom right now. Okay, that's one. So yeah, still fishing with the bobber, still with the crappie scrub, just twitching it in and had to figure out what depth they were at in order to get them to bite. We'll see if that's a pattern or what. That was one of the healthier ones, so the big ones might be in here today. Keep my fingers crossed we find like a 14 or 15. Okay, I'm having, uh, having a little problem getting action on uh, the crappie scrub, whether it's below the bobber or not. So I'm gonna see sometimes early season like this, a little chartreuse jig and a waxworm 
under a slip vote will do some good and uh, see if we can get do some damage and catch a couple more of these guys. Kind of have to mess around with the depth and stuff and see, but I have so many uh, boat slips to fish. I have to kind of like work my way through them and see, see if there's any fish below each and every one of them. I landed on one and it's not little. <laughs> I'm gonna get away from this pier over here because uh, yeah I was trying to make a cast in front of it and as soon as my bait hit the water this dude nailed it and uh, you guys got to see this thing and my bait just fell out. <laughs> Well, there's a tank. I want to see how big this girl is. She's full of eggs. 13 and a half. We're getting there. That's what I'm after. <laughs> that is exactly what I want. All right, let's get this girl back. <laughs> okay so that's a good start um so i pushed myself way off of this pier one thing i'm going to give everybody a tip and it's it's kind of sad because a lot of people don't understand this so if you catch a crappie and it's near the surface there's usually a bunch more around that's just how they are and uh yeah if you go over the top of them like if you're messing around with your fish by the side of the boat and then you happen to float over the top of them you will spook them out of the area and then you're gonna have a really hard time finding them and uh I've spent the last like four hours looking right now, so I didn't want to do that. Hopefully there's like 15, 20 more over there. The cool thing is these piers are numbered, so I'll be able to just go back to the one that I was on. But that's exactly what I wanted. So 13 and a half. So we're getting there. I'm, anything over 14 on this lake is big. Okay, so you've seen it before. I'll link all this stuff down below. It's pretty simple. I'm doing the Kalen's setup. If you guys are new here, that's a Kalen's crappie scrub with like a... Kalen's jig uh, it's going I have it on my apex elite ultralight from tuned up customs I'll link everything down below but if you do order uh, tuned up customs just remember you can use the code DWS 10 save yourself 10% off of these rods this ultralight's so fun and it works really really good for keeping those big crappies pinned so really happy I got this setup going but yeah let's go I'm gonna try and stick some more of those things because when they get big like that I mean, I felt that thing hit, so he might have been just underneath the surface, and uh, I might have to shallow this up, but either way, I want to catch more fish. sure what I have but it's uh I think it's a carp but <laughs> it's definitely more than four pound test I just want my jig back get away from there I got my dig back. <laughs> That's all I care about.
not a crappie. I don't know if this guy ate it or not. But it's not little. Am I recording? I am. <laughs> this is a little bit too big for this uh, ultralight. Can I have my jig back? Okay. <laughs> I got my jig back again. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure there's just a million carp in here right now. I just want some more crappie. Is that too much to ask for? Mm -hmm. That waxworm's getting bit. What is that? Oh. There's some bluegills up here. Some eaters too. Man, if I wanted to eat some bluegills, now would be the time to do it. I uh, switched it up on my other rod and threw two wax worms on this little, little sickle hook jig. These fish are not playing nice right now. That's all. Just kind of making some fan cast around this flat. I have a bunch of freaking geese and pelicans. So just follow the birds and they'll tell you where the fish are. Look like something's chasing my minnow. <laughs> Something decent on the wax room? Another eater bluegill. Yeah, these guys are ice cold still. I guess the main lake still needs to warm up. Waxworm's doing the trick today. What are you? Well, they're like six to seven inch gill cookie cutters. I wanted a clean fish, which I don't. <laughs> I, I got them pretty much pegged down, so real simple. I'll link this thing below that's a really good thing but i i painted that chartreuse but it's a it's a little red hook silver jig that i painted this way because a lot of fish like that but so just one wax worm on one wax worm hanging off and it's uh it's catching the fish for me it seems like the further away i cast the better i get so these fish might be spooked fairly easy in here Find another one finally. I did. Come on. Just a little guy, but I haven't seen one of these guys in a while. So there's a shallow flat right here. You just swimming with it. Eat it. Got him. 
That feels better. What are you? Lots of seven inch bluegills. Surprised they haven't caught one crappie in this yet. I'm gonna guess there's a school of bluegills right over here. Cause that didn't take long. Okay, we just need to get one big fish out of this school. We'll see what we can find. They're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Water came up to about 54 degrees, so... I'm sure that's why they're starting to feed, but... I'm just not seeing anything giant. I think I got the bluegills dialed in. <laughs> Nothing big though. Oh, it is. I was just trying to cast for one of these guys. I knew that had to happen one of these times. Yep. Got the, the wax rooms and the sickle hook jig. Another like eight, nine. See how big this guy is. Uh, never mind. That's a 12. <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, I, I had to set my other rod down. I was making uh I was making some cast. And I figured I'd cast somewhere near the the bobber so that I could uh keep an eye on it. And yeah course go to make cast with this thing and crappie eats the, <laughs> the wax rims instead it's good to see i was getting worried i wasn't sure if there were any more uh any more crappie in here we've had a really messed up uh season so far this spring though so it doesn't surprise me that it's hard to target them and pinpoint exactly where they're at hopefully that means they're feeding Okay guys, I don't know if you can even hear me because <laughs> these freaking geese today are just obnoxious. Ugh. So you got geese battling, um, what are those things? Pelicans. And uh, the geese are on nest, so the pelicans are bugging them and then the geese get all riled up. But anyways, enough about them stupid birds. I am still kind of just bobbing around. Uh, I have both bobbers right now. Um, I think the last thing you guys probably saw was that uh, random crappie on the wax worm so that does work I just wanted to make sure to reiterate like try uh, double hooked wax worms so like I thread one on and then I just uh, hook one by the tail so it's flopping around on there but I think that color combination and that size early season when it's really fin when they're really finicky or even if they're just really finicky uh, crappie will eat that but yeah I'm gonna keep punching around until uh about sunset. I think I got about an hour or two left here, so let's see how it goes. <laughs> I hit that frickin' pier from like a mile away. This dude ate it as soon as it dropped in front of him. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> Good healthy little dudes. Wonder if there's any more. That was a long cast.
That was a fish. <laughs> Just swimming down there with it. They're getting smaller. That's a little bit better. Oh. Am I recording? I am. That only took 11 minutes. Getting closer to dark here though. Alright guys, uh, as you guys can see the sun is setting over there and uh, I am still dealing with squawkers over here. But uh, I think that was probably, I think I got like 12, 13 crappie today, and then a couple of decent bluegills. Um, I didn't actually plan on catching those bluegills, but uh, usually in the springtime, they all kind of push in together. But those last couple crappies were getting a little bit smaller, but the upside is I kind of think I figured out a pattern. Um, so in this bay, there's a bunch of carp, like millions of them. So wherever there were carp, there weren't crappie today. And then wherever there weren't crappie, or wherever there weren't carp, there were crappie. So that's going to be my uh, little note for today. Hopefully that kind of helps you guys out. So if you're running into a bunch of rough fish and you're trying to chase crappie in the shallows in the spring, do yourself a favor. If you're snagging carp left and right, go to a different spot because the crappie probably aren't there. But either way, I caught some fish today and it was a really good day. I was able to wear my shorts. It's getting cold again, but uh, yeah, start of the warm weather. And uh, yeah, so if you're new here, subscribe. Remember to hit that like button if you guys like these things. And then uh, yeah, see you guys next time.